Shalom. Welcome back to Issachar Forum, a prophetic think tank. This is Les Lawrence uh, of Elisha Vision Ministries. Man, I'm glad to have you with us. Um, and I want to remind you, you can uh, read my blogs that I put up once or twice a week uh, at elishavision.wordpress.com. And uh, I'll talk about a couple of those in a second. But first, let's just open with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Abba, we come before you and thank you that you are on the job, that you have a purpose, a plan for this planet, for our nations, for Israel, for the Middle East, and you're, every, you have everything under control. Even when we look at the news and think things aren't under control, you're still in charge. And we just uh, put our trust in you, and we thank you for your son, Jesus, Yeshua ben Yehovah, the Son of God. Thank you, Father. Bless our time together. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, um, the last couple uh, postings I put on my blog, I just want to draw your attention to. Uh, one is called Days of Elijah, There is Hope. And you need to, if you haven't looked at that, please go there and click on it uh, because it's a group of Marines singing the song, These Are the Days of Elijah. And it is powerful. It is just so thrilling. Uh, and I just pray that the Spirit of God would be with all of our uh, servicemen and uh, servant and that they would have that kind of spirit uh, that they show in that song. Hallelujah. And then uh, the latest one I wrote was uh, called Trumpet Sounding, and I uh, did it on uh, Yom Tura, the, Turua, the uh, day of trumpets, the sounding of trumpets, uh, which is the first of the three fall feasts of the Lord, Feast of Jehovah in Israel, and celebrated by Jews around the world and many Christians as well. And uh, I believe that's actually the season of the year when Jesus is going to uh, come back. The Messiah comes at the sounding of the trumpet, I believe. And uh, when the last trumpet sounds, uh, he comes, the Apostle Paul says. So I invite you to uh, read that and enjoy it. Uh, one of the verses I quoted was 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So I encourage you to, to read that blog. And uh, I also explain the, the meaning of the phrase, no man knows the day or the hour. And uh, you know, if you haven't heard that before, I think you'll be pretty amazed. All right, well, let's get in some of the news. I'm, this is going to be rather quick tonight. I've uh, been away at a conference this week, and, and uh, it's going to be a little shorter than usual. But uh, a lot of things are happening right now. One of the main things in the news, uh, other than terrorism, is the uh, UN uh, meetings in New York City, the annual meetings where all the heads of state gather together and they take turns speaking. And uh, Abbas uh, spoke for the Palestinians, and uh, he accused Israel of genocide, which is uh, ridiculous, but uh, he gets away with it because, let's face it, 57 nations in the UN are... Muslim nations, and they they are uh, already biased to believe that Israel is a bad uh, country, and they hate the Jews, and the Quran says to kill them. So uh, it's kind of hard to get a, a clear uh, sound of truth from Abbas. Uh, but I mentioned his speech, uh, and these are all available. You can Google them and, and listen to the speeches or read excerpts from them and so forth. But uh, tomorrow uh, morning, I think it's in the morning, I'm not, I couldn't find the exact time, but uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel is uh, giving his speech at the United Nations, and he's made a point of saying that he's going to refute uh, what Abbas said for the Palestinians and what Rouhani said for Iran. And uh, in fact, there's an article on uh, Israel National News today that says uh, Netanyahu promises razor sharp speech at the United Nations, and uh, his associates on the flight to New York said that uh, Netanyahu's UN speech is worth the worth the wait. <laughs> and uh, if you were listening to his speeches, uh, he usually is quite clear. I, I don't know a world leader who has such moral clarity. And uh, so if you don't get a chance to watch the speech tomorrow, at least uh, you ought to uh, Google it and, and uh, or read it uh, yourself. Uh, and then Wednesday, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is also going to be meeting with uh, President Obama in Washington. Most of his meetings are, the prime minister's meetings are in New York, but Wednesday he'll uh, go down to Washington to meet with the president. And, uh, of course, they'll be discuss, discussing Iran, the Islamic State, uh, ISIS, uh, and they'll talk about the uh, aftermath of the 50-day conflict in Gaza. 
And uh, we need to pray for that meeting that, uh, that the truth will be agreed on between the two leaders. And uh, then there's a, another uh, report from the UN. The UN Security Council takes aim at foreign, foreign jihadists. Historic session of heads of state at the UN. Uh, the, the UN Security Council has only had a meeting where the heads of state of, of the Security Council members came together. That's only happened five previous times. This was the sixth time. And it was the U.S.'s turn in the rotating uh, chairmanship of the Security Council. So President Obama actually presided in this meeting and of course it was about the jihadists and and they actually came out with an actual pretty clear resolution to fight the uh, jihadists and uh, and even though the president continues to deny that we're at war with Islam and and uh, strikes all references to Islam and Islamic jihadists in American uh, issues in American uh, you know events like uh, like uh, Major Hassan and in uh, uh, killing 14 people and using the Muslim slogan as he was doing it. And then, of course, this a couple of days ago in Oklahoma City, the woman that was beheaded by a man also yelling out the name of the Muslim God and, and the, the slogan. Uh, but uh, so even though there's a major blind spot with the president, I pray that that, uh, that God will protect America and Israel uh, from these radical, uh, bloodthirsty jihadists. Um, good article in Israel Today magazine this week. Uh, the headline is, Muslim states say Israel has no right to self-defense. And uh, even though in every other nation in the world, and for that matter, individual people uh, believe that there's an inalienable right of self-defense, uh, the Muslim uh, states' representatives in a human rights, UN Human Rights uh, Council in Geneva this week uh, uh, said that uh, Israel doesn't have a right to defend themselves. Just another part of the the, the uh, kind of kabuki dance propaganda that keeps coming out of the out of the Muslim world. Um, mostly, uh, a few more stories I want to share with you. Um, there's a uh, article in Arut Shava Israel National News that uh, Israel has uh, designed a new tank cartridge made for urban warfare. It's a 120 millimeter Hatzav delayed action cartridge. It first penetrates the outer wall of a structure and then explodes. Uh, one of the values of that is that it makes uh, less collateral damage. Uh, it damages the inside of the building instead of just exploding the whole building and, and the surrounding area. And uh, the technology that Israel is developing is just amazing. Uh, I, I won't take the time to get into that, but that's kind of the latest one. Um, another good report in uh, Israel National News 24,800 new immigrants came to, arrived in Israel in the Jewish year, which just ended a, a few days ago, as we had the sounding of the trumpets in the, uh, Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. Uh, 24,800 new immigrants in Israel, uh, more of them from France than any other country. That's the first time France has had the most uh, Jewish people making Aliyah immigration to Israel. Uh, but this... Uh, 24,800 total is uh, a five-year high, and uh, part of the part of the thrilling thing about that statistic is that uh, many of those actually came during the Gaza conflict, and uh, just shows that what's happening is that God is calling the hearts of Jewish people to come back to to the land of Israel. And another article in Israel Today, uh, kind of interesting, uh, just starting in a few days, is the uh, the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, in uh, Jerusalem, part of the fall feast, uh, three feasts after Yom Kippur. And uh, neat neat story here that uh, a Christian uh, meeting, a Christian group, is going to be the first ones to use the new Jerusalem arena. There's a brand new Jerusalem uh, arena that's uh, like the quality of an NBA arena uh, that seats at, you know, I don't know, 15 or 20,000 people. I don't see the actual number of how many it seats. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, it has 11,600 seats for this uh, for this particular gathering of the International Christian Embassy Jerusalem celebration of the Feast of Tabernacles, and uh, they usually have Christians from uh, oh I don't know something like 80 countries uh, come. And uh, one of the features during the week is they do a, 
um, a march through Jerusalem of Christians that stand with Israel and and uh, usually Israelis will stand there and just applaud and and say thank you uh, that there are Christians that are willing to stand with them. Um, another uh, article. This is in a, uh, the Times of Israel in a section they have uh, called Startup Israel, and it says Intel, the the big tech company, a uh, computer company, Intel, is going to spend six billion dollars in Israel's biggest ever tech investment. Under the deal, the tech company gets a huge grant and tax concessions and will provide thousands of new jobs in Israel. And uh, that's really good news for Israel. I praise the Lord for that. And a uh, good article uh, just uh, just yesterday, or no, today actually, uh, um, on also in timesofisrael.com, uh, Western Wall Plaza uh, archaeological dig reveals structures dating back to Herod. These are 2,000-year-old uh, structures. They're actually complete underground rooms uh, with arches, with the columns, and so forth that uh, were just discovered this year under the, the Western Wall Plaza. That's the, the plaza where people gather at the Western Wall. And they didn't dig under the Temple Mount because they don't want to disturb it. But, they, but in this area, they found uh, amazing rooms and so forth and uh, dates back to Roman times. And uh, that's pretty exciting. And, uh, and then finally, the last uh, story I want to mention is just, uh, I say somewhat tongue-in-cheek, uh, this is a worldwide weather report. <laughs> um, actually, seriously, it's a, an article on uh, prophecynewswatch.com that says the number of volcanic eruptions is increasing, and that could lead to an extremely cold winter. It goes through in details a uh, number of uh, volcanoes, something like 30 summer actually, 34 uh, volcanoes are erupting around the globe right now. And there's a huge one in uh, Iceland that looks like it's about to go, and another one in the Philippines, two major, very large ones. If they, if they should actually also erupt uh, with major eruptions, um, it could actually cause uh, colder weather that could last several years. And uh, that's because of the ash that sort of blocks some of the rays of the sun and so forth. could even affect... The, uh, the yield of, of food crops, and it could be very serious if it got real, really bad. So, uh, but uh, at the very least, it sounds like this winter may be colder, uh, not just in the United States, but, but around the world because of that. So uh, that's just a little quick <laughs> spin around the news, uh, and uh, I, I hope you're also reading for yourself and, and uh, keeping up. It's time, I, I, when I preach, I always like to end with, it's time to wake up, stand up, and speak up. Uh, it's time for us to speak up for God's purposes and especially in what he's doing in Israel. This is the day of Israel's restoration after almost 2,000 years of judgment and scattering and wandering the earth. God is calling them back to the land. He's given them the land back. He's given their state back. He's given their language back. He's given them Jerusalem back. And the next thing will be the Messiah coming back. <laughs> so uh, let's pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Father, thank you for your faithfulness that you are the God who keeps his word. And we do pray that all of Israel will see the Messiah. They'll recognize the Messiah. Uh, Lord, I believe he's been revealed as Jesus of Nazareth. But Lord, you're going to re reveal him to the Jewish people as the Messiah they've been longing for. Let it be soon, Lord, we pray. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Hope to see you again next week. Shalom, shalom. <laughs>